Hey everybody, I'm Jaden and welcome to day 7 of Baddie Miss. Now today, the video's late and here's why. Because I have had this crunchy audio issue for the past three times I've tried to record this video. And honestly, it has just been a pain in my neck. Um, but we're here now. I finally got my microphone working again. So the audio won't be crunchy. So yay! Okay. So we are going to be bringing the some sort of packs today so I can help you guys when it comes to getting these holiday gifts or even when it comes to you getting a gift like a Sims $25 card and being able to spend it on these Sim games. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Excuse the fact that I have recorded this before and my responses are probably going to be short because I don't like repeating what I said before and I said so much before so this is going to be painful. But I'm going to try to give a brief description on why you feel a way about a certain pack. And then we'll go from there. So we have Spade. It's average for me. Doesn't really add much in terms of my personal gameplay. Um, some of the items are cute in terms of creative sim. But overall, I don't really use them that much. So that's why it's ranked average. But I don't regret buying it. Like, I like having it. So next we have Laundry Day stuff, which is nice to have. For my type of gameplay, I love little things. So, having laundry in the game, it's very much like, oh, you know, the kids can go do laundry as a chore, or, hey, before you leave the house, go do the laundry, and then you can leave. Very much that energy. I just love it. It's really cute. Um, so, yeah, I like the pack. Next, we have Spooky Stuff, which I don't own, so I got no comments. And then, after that, we have My First Pet Stuff, which I also don't own, but I can tell you, it's a cash grab. If you have to make a pack that practically requires another pack to unlock some of the items then it's an, a cash grab girl it's a cash grab and a half next we have romantic garden stuff which honestly i wish i didn't buy originally it was in my average list but i wish i didn't buy it because it doesn't have enough strong things for me in it the whole point of it was supposed to be like you're furnishing a garden and stuff which is cute but overall it i don't i'm not really out here building gardens and even when it comes to landscaping, some of the items are a little too standout-ish. So, no fan vibes. And then the Christmas items are outdated for me. So, yeah, wish I didn't buy it. Next, we have Nifty Knitting, which I don't have, so I have no comments. Then we have Get Together, which is the best pack in The Sims 4, and you cannot change my mind. If you do not own Get Together, girl, you are doing something wrong. You have to get this pack. It is amazing. It's the second expansion pack of The Sims 4, and it has, like, the biggest world, which is the best world, too, may I add. It is the best aesthetically pleasing world, in my opinion. Um, the biggest, um, the most potential for exploration, which is really ironic, but I just love it so much. It adds so much gameplay, and overall, it's just a great pack. I love it. Okay, and then we have Parenthood. It's nice to have, too, for my type of gameplay. I'm a family gamer. I mean, I'm a family summer. So I love having families, and having Parenthood is really nice for families because it adds this dynamic of, you know, you get to assign chores, you get assigned a curfew, um, you get to discipline your kids and reward your kids. Overall, it's just really nice for family gameplay. The creative items I don't, like, gag over. Like, they're not anything crazy, but I do like them. And overall, it's just a nice pack to have. And then we have City Living, which is also the best of the best for me. I love this pack. I eat it up. I like the careers that it comes with. Uh, like the social media career, I love that career. It's so much fun. Um, overall, it's just a great pack. I like it. I really enjoy it. Um, the world is great. The creators for items are really cute. Um, I don't. I don't know what to tell you otherwise. I mean, other than you should get it. It's a really cute pack. And there are backyard stuff, which I'm putting in, which I didn't buy, because I barely use any of the things in my backyard because I tend to live on smaller lots so I don't have like a huge backyard space and if I do I still am not using this stuff because it's hard to blend in with the backyard you know like I kind of want my backyard to be a little organized tame it has a garden most of the time and it's kind of hard to incorporate that into it so because most of the items are like, really big and long so I'm like oh yikes okay and the creative items are really outdated and kind of ugly. 
so I wouldn't really recommend it. Next, we have Jungle Adventure, which is average. Oh, and you know, it's average, but it's lower average. It's like borderline wish I didn't buy, only because it's a one-time story type thing. I mean, I eat it up because it has some uh, Central American culture in it, and I love that. That is so fierce, uh, and it's great. The criticism items are cute, too. I really like them, but overall for gameplay, it's like a one-time type thing. You can really only go to it once or twice or three times, and then it gets like boring. Like You will not go back, and the world's cute, but you can't go to it other than a vacation. And even in a vacation, there's nothing to do other than explore. So, yeah, it's not that great. And then we have Get to Work, which is so nice to have. It's like borderline best of the best because I love it. You know, I really underappreciated the pack at the time when it came out. But looking at it now compared to some of these newer expansion packs, girl, it has a lot in it. It came with three base careers that you could choose from. It came with... uh police officer which ugh, um doctor and scientist which are pretty fun careers oh it didn't come with a police officer it came with detective that's what it's called detective so which are really fun base careers you know they have a lot to them and you can physically go to work with your sims and then you have the business side of it so your sim can become an entrepreneur basically i mean maybe not an entrepreneur but like a business owner and it's just honestly really cute. You can have a clothing store. You can have a bakery. You can have a lot of stores. You know, it's just great. I love it. The Christian items aren't that great, but that's because they're also from 2015. So it's kind of understandable why they didn't age that well. But yeah, it's honestly a good pack and I really like it. Then we have Outdoor Retreat, which I wish I didn't buy. It's, like, one of the better ones that I wish I didn't buy. But, like, I need to move this to the end. But I wish I didn't buy it. Um, it was the first pack for The Sims 4, I'm pretty sure. So, I understand why it's, like, bad. But looking at it now, I, it's not a purchase I would make. Unless you're trying to complete your collection, then obviously purchase it. But, uh, I don't even know. It's just, it's bad. Yeah, it's just bad. And then we have Cool Kitchen, which is average. Um... I like the items that it came with in terms of the kitchen, but the gameplay, I never use ice cream machines, like, ever. So, there's that. And the creativism items were really cute at the time, but they're more outdated now, so I don't really recommend them that much. So, yeah. And they're a bowling night, which is nice to have. Now, hear me out on this. The reason I put it nice to have is because it's very much my type of gameplay again, um, and you'll see that, like, as a pattern with my nice to have and best of the best. It's my type of gameplay. Except we get together. It's not really my type of gameplay. I just love it. Um, it makes me want to try new gameplay, which is something I really feel like a pack needs. Anyways, back to Bowling Night. So, Bowling Night is something that's really cute for me because I can have little mini storylines like, oh, you know, like, my sim son is going on his first date. And he has to be his little gal pal or his boyfriend in uh, a bowling game. And, like, first date anxiousness, you know, just very exciting stuff like that. Or you could even have a family bowling night. It's like, hey, kids, we're going out for a family bowling night, okay? And it's going to be the competition of competitions. Whoever wins this bowling game doesn't have to do a chore for a week. Boom. And it's just really cute. Really cute gameplay for me. And then we have cats and dogs, which is average. Because the pets aren't playable, and if any witch has to say to me, Oh, well, the Sims 2 didn't have playable pets. Okay. But the, was the Sims 2 the predecessor to the Sims 4? It wasn't. The Sims 3 was. And the Sims 3 had playable pets. And typically, you always try to outdo your predecessor. So... You shouldn't be matching their predecessors energy you know it's just kind of embarrassing it really is it's embarrassing and the creative item stuff aren't that great i don't really i'm not a fan of them i do like brindleton bay though it's a cute world especially like the midtown area where like the docks are and everything that's a cute area um and i like the vet career it kind of gets boring after a while but it's so cute so i like it 
And then you have Dine Out, which I'm putting it nice to have. Even though it's buggy, it's still a pack that I really enjoy playing. It makes me, like, want to play the game, you know? Especially because, like, it's very much like a Tiana fantasy. Like, I'm almost there. Very that energy. And she got there, girl. She got there. Gag. And now she's building up her restaurant from the ground up. I mean, there are some things that need to be updated about this pack. Like, I wish your Sims could work in the kitchen. But, you know, it is what it is. I overall like this pack because you could have a family business. You could be like, oh, I'm taking over the family business. This is big for me, you know? Or, you know, it could be, okay, girls. I mean, girls. Okay, guys. We're going out for dinner tonight. So grab everybody and let's go out for family dinner. Very that. I, I just love family game Sims 4. I'm not going to lie. I live. And then we have Eagle Lifestyle, which I don't own, so I don't have any comments on it. Um, it's it's more towards, like, the average side of don't own, though, because I've heard from friends that it's a good pack, but they also don't play The Sims 4, so their opinions are not that valid, okay? And that's the truth. And then we have fitness stuff. Um, It's average, purely because I didn't buy it. I literally cannot put it in which I didn't buy it because I did not buy it. And it's not really a cash grab either. I mean, it kind of is, but it kind of isn't. Uh, the criticism items I don't use, even in athletic wear, I don't really use them. So if that tells you something. The rock wall, it's okay. It's not really that, like, crazy. Um, but I do like how you can have some prettier gems. It's just fun. It's really fun. Uh, then we have Star Wars. It's a cash grab. Babe, it's a cash grab. I didn't buy it. I don't own it, but it's a cash grab. And I hate Star Wars. I hate, hate, hate Star Wars. And overall, I feel like there's a big disconnect. Like, you can't access the world unless you're, you've gotten a phone call. You also can't uh, really use to build and buy items, I'm assuming. Because I'm assuming, like, they're very situational towards the pack. Like, I don't really see myself using Star Wars stuff and, like, my family builds. So, yeah. And the Christmas items are also probably like, the same way. I don't see myself using that on my family sims. Um, the hairs are cute, so there's a plus there, but that's about it. And then we have kids' room stuff, which is average. Overall, I like kids' room stuff. It's cute. The main thing was, like, the puppet thing, the puppet show. I don't really use that ever, but I do like some of the kids' things that they added because they're good for skills and stuff. So, yeah, I like that pack overall. And the creative items are cute. I don't really use them for my kids that much, but they're cute. So, luxury party stuff, what should I buy? Baby boys, this. I never use anything in this pack other than two of the hairs. And even then, I barely use those two. The female hairs are the best part of the pack. And that is saying something. Um, perfect patio. It's also, I wish I didn't buy. Purely because the main gameplay feature for this pack at the time was hot tubs. And then they added hot tubs to the base game. So, you can see why there's a problem there. And overall, the creative some items aren't that great either. Um, it comes with, like, a cute crop top that I used to use all the time, but I don't really use it anymore because I have a lot more crop tops now that are cuter than that. So, yeah, wish I didn't buy it. Wish I didn't buy it. And then we have Seasons. It's average for me. I know everyone eats this pack up. But personally, I don't know. I'm not a big fan I like to build and buy items only when it comes to building, like, holiday builds, though. Like, the only time I've used it is for, uh, my Christmas builds, you know? Like, uh, whatchamacallit? Like, my Christmas cottage and my Christmas apartment. Those are the really only times I use, like, the holiday decorations very heavily. Because, personally, I don't really decorate my Sims houses for the holidays. I know I should, because it would be, like, more of a family type thing. And maybe I start, maybe I will start doing it. But as of now, I don't really do it. I do like some of the creative some items. Some of them are miss for me, though. Like, a hard miss. Like, some of the hairs. The hairlines are just at weird places, so it's just weird. But, overall, it's average for me. I, I like it. I also am, like, not loving it, though. And they have taller stuff, which is nice to have if you're a 100 baby challenge type player. Or just, like, a very toddler family-oriented type player. Because it's really good when it comes to toddlers building skills. And 
when it comes to like the main thing of it, it adds like a bunch of different toddler activities to do. I mean, they had the controversy of the ball pit, but they ended up fixing that eventually, so it's okay now. Um, but overall, I like this pack. I like how I can make my toddlers look all cute and adorable because of the stuff that it added in Creative Sim. And, um, you know, it just adds a lot of things to level up toddler skills quickly. So yeah, vampires, wish I didn't buy. You know, it is just not my type of gameplay. I don't like the Creative Sim. I don't like the gameplay and I don't like the world. So it's a no for me. I don't own Island Living, so I'm not be giving an opinion on it. I also don't own Moschino stuff, so I won't be giving an opinion on it. Other than they kind of snatched the whole photography thing from Get to Work, which was another key thing in Get to Work. Um, so, I don't, I don't know. It just kind of has, like, less points for me there. But overall, yeah. And there are movie hangout stuff, which is nice to have because family gameplay. You know, I love movie hangout stuff because... Of nostalgia that it comes with. I remember getting this pack and be like, I love all these creative some items because they're so colorful at the time. And they were so diverse and really cute. Very bohemian. I was feeling my oats. I was that was when I was like heavily into bohemian style builds. It was just really cute. And even now, you know, you can have these little family movie nights and you can have another date type thing. You know, you have two teens going to a drive-in movie theater to go watch a movie, which is so cute. So overall, I just like this pack. I think it's cute. We have Roman Magic, which I don't own. I hear it's not that great, but that's what I've heard. I need to experience it firsthand to really give it an opinion, though. And then we have Strangerville. It's average. Um, I'm not a big fan of the creative some items. I'm also not a big fan of the gameplay, like, because the story repeats itself. Like, there's no different, differentiation. I don't know if that's the right word. But the gameplay doesn't really diversify anything, so it's kind of the same thing over and over again. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't really recommend it. And the world's cute as heck, but you have to play through the story to actually play the world without the fog and stuff. And then you have Tiny Living, which is nice to have if you're more of like an exploration or discovery type simmer, because you can have a tiny house and um, you can move around a lot to different lots with that same house to kind of feel that fantasy of like a trailer house or whatever. And it's just, it's nice to have because a lot of the objects fit into tiny places. So it's just ideal. It really is. I like it. And then we have Get Famous, which is upper average, because honestly, I appreciate it a lot more now than I did when it released. The only reason I had, like, big backlash when it released was because of the world being so small, which is a, one thing that really pushes it down to average for me. Um, but overall, I like the careers that added. I like the creative some items that added. Overall, I like it. It's pretty good. It's a good pack, you know? We have Vintage Glamour, which... I'm putting average because I don't use the main gameplay feature of butlers, but I do use the crazy items, so that's something. And lastly, we have Snow Escape, which I do not own, so I have no opinion on it. But anyways, if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like down below. And this is my final ranking of the packs. Let me zoom out a little bit, actually. This is it. So yeah, hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. And tune in tomorrow for day eight of Batty Mess, I think, I think it is. But yeah, make sure to tune in then, and I'll talk to you guys all later. Bye, guys.